on or rather in the River Thames at Egham. A 12-foot river cruiser is a sorry and rather sunken sight. A team from the Environment Agency is on hand to conduct a tricky rescue operation. Peter Cobb is in charge. We'll be using the salvage barge, so there's going to be a four-man crew and we've got the divers to deploy the strops under the boat, so they're in the right place for lifting. The owner only moored up last night, little knowing his boat had sprung a leak. As it turned out, the Environment Agency chap was here, and I thought I was going to get told off for parking it in the wrong place, and um, asked where the boat was, thinking he had towed it off somewhere, and, um, and he said to me, you mean the one that sunk? And uh, I was like, ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. And he's like, no, really, the one that has sunk. And there it was, under the water, my boat. It's always a shame when something goes down, and but basically without realising why. So hopefully we'll see what's happened and he can put it right and then happy sailing again. Only the mooring ropes are preventing this prized possession from sinking to the bottom. When the crane's in position, we're going to raise it up out of the water, pump it out, and then ascertain as to why it sank. And who, who picks up the bill for that? Not us. <laughs> It'll get a lot more expensive if they don't act fast. Morning, Jed. How's everything? That's the risk management stuff for the job. Peter briefs the team. On me arm, John. A salvage barge is carefully manoeuvred into position. This takes 10 tonne on the legs, but it'll actually be 30 tonne on the cat head. But the water levels are high, which could make things dangerous for the dive team. Well, if you can see that the weir at the moment, there's a huge amount of water coming across, and we've got to close that off, shut it in, and then it will allow the divers to actually get in the water, and it's a safe environment then for them. Visibility will be poor today because of the high flow. I mean, Neil's diving, Neil will be a lucky, possibly less than a foot of fizz. But the lock keeper is away, and precious minutes are ticking by. It's a bit urgent to get it out because only the mooring ropes at the moment is holding it from sinking right to the bottom. At last, the lock keeper arrives. This is Dave Andrews, the uh, resident lock keeper. But Dave won't be rushed and prepares himself properly for the task in hand. Give me a minute. I just got here. <laughs> Luckily, it's not a complex job. It's just a set of buttons up, down, and stop. So we just go and push the down button. Ready for action, Dave sets off to push the down button. And in no time at all, the water level goes down. It's safer now for the divers to go in, and with the mooring ropes taking the strain, there's not a minute to waste. Back in Egham, the rescue team is ready to raise the stricken river cruiser. But first, a diver must position the lifting gear underneath the vessel. The strops uh, should go under the boat with um, little resistance. There's good clearance under the boat. We'll, 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 we'll see. The diver is underwater, but still in radio contact with Barry. OK, can you proceed to the bow with the end of the strop in your hand and then surface on the bow? Watch that, mate. Come on, way down. He's heading to the bow, select a diver. Clear communication is vital for the diver's safety. Proceed with caution, Neil. Please don't go under the boat. Yeah, watch that. I'm staying outside the boat. What we don't want is the diver going underneath the boat in any way, shape or form in case the ropes break. So we just want to keep him safe and doing it in the easiest possible way. He's coming up on the bow with a rope. Communicating with each other like this, this is how we get the jobs done properly, see? The diver has secured the strops in place. Now the team can attach them to the crane. Up easy on diver, Mark. We'll get him out. But before the lifting can start, they've got to clear the diver. Right out, all yours. Lifting begins. Take him down a bit. But things do not go quite as planned. The problem we've got at the moment is the strops. We've got to get them, try and get them more central because they're binding. That's better. Yes. The strops are not central, and the boat could slide back into the water. The team press on with caution. They pull it up just far enough to pump out the water. We'll weigh so much with uh, the water in there, we'll do damage otherwise. No. As the pump sucks out the water from inside the boat, 
The lads can slowly raise it clear of the surface. It might not be the prettiest of lifts, but she's up. It's now possible to identify the source of the leak. All we can see at the moment is by mooring with the stern end into the water, which is the back part of the boat, water pressure was hitting a weak part of the unit and it's pressurising water into the boat. The very expensive lesson is about to be learned. Always make sure you moor her up with your head up into the stream. You can actually see what happens when you don't actually do it right. You can salvage the boat, but it's going to be, have to be ripped out, stripped off, engines redone. So on the whole, yeah, it is a very costly sort of learning curve. Oh, we've turned the boat round. We are securing it up as it should be moored up. We've established there's no more leaks. I just wish the boat well now.